that's responsible for emergency management British Columbia. For the last several weeks, Provincial Health Officer Dr. Bonnie Henry and Minister of Health Adrian Dix have been working tirelessly to prevent the spread of COVID-19. Dr. Henry has given us important instructions on how we can flatten the curve and keep people safe and healthy. Yesterday's declaration of a public health emergency facilitates even faster response to this rapidly evolving situation and gives our public health officer the ability to make swift decisions to protect British Columbians. COVID-19 is impacting all of us, touching our lives and our economy. And I know it's been hard on people. I want to assure British Columbians that our government is doing everything possible to mitigate the risk for people in our province. But we are facing daily shifting challenges, as is everyone in this difficult time. At this juncture, we need to ensure that we will continue to have the means to coordinate our response across government, across industry, and that we have the tools available to protect the most vulnerable. That is why today, based on the recommendations of BC's health and emergency management officials and following Dr. Bonnie Henry's declaration of a public health emergency, I am declaring a provincial state of emergency to support our provincial health officer and minister of health in swift and powerful response to the COVID-19 pandemic. This declaration will make sure federal, provincial and local resources are delivered in a joint coordinated way to protect the people of our province. This is an all hands on deck approach. The declaration also includes the means to secure critical supply chains to ensure people have access to essential goods and services, and that any infrastructure necessary to support the response to COVID-19 is readily available. Yesterday, you heard the Premier and Minister of Finance outline our plan to support people and to protect workers. As House Leader, I'm working to resume the legislature to complete this urgent government business to expedite our response to COVID-19 and the key decisions that will need to be made in the coming days to give immediate relief to the people and businesses in our province. I want to take this opportunity to thank Opposition House Leader Mary Polak and Green Party House Leader Sonia Furstenau for their cooperation. Together, we have agreed to resume the legislature on Monday with a reduced number of members to pass important legislation that will ensure the continuity of government and provide important employment supports to people in our province. Our government will do whatever is necessary to protect and support British Columbians and communities, and we will use any and all resources available to keep people safe. These are extraordinary times, and I want to acknowledge and express sincere appreciation for the efforts of all involved in this emergency. To the essential service workers, to the health professionals, to the grocery clerks who continue to support us all. As Dr. Henry has said, now is the time to be kind, be calm, and most of all, to be safe. We all have a role in protecting public safety in our communities. Provincial states of emergency were previously declared in 2017 and 2018 in response to wildfires. The way communities came together during those events was nothing short of extraordinary. We're now asking all people in this province for their support again. Follow the advice of the public health officer. Be vigilant about your hand hygiene. Maintain social or physical distancing and stay home if you're sick. We are going to get through this together. All of us. Thank you. Thank you, Minister. We'll now take questions uh, and we'll only take one question at one time. Uh, we'll take questions from the room first and then go to the phones. Uh, my colleague Johan has a microphone. Please do speak into it. The first question from the room, Frank, Omni Regional. Uh, so, Minister, what, are, what does it mean for a state of emergency in the province? And what kind of measures uh, will that also include measures uh, of tight and control at the border? Um, so, 
Dealing with that last bit first, the measures of uh, control at the border were announced uh, today by the, the federal government. Um, we are very pleased uh, with the decisions that were made. They clearly have uh, to listen to British Columbia in that regard. Uh, what today's declaration uh, allows is for a, uh, a province-wide approach to back up the provincial health declaration, emergency declaration that was made yesterday by uh, Dr. Bonnie Henry. Uh, the act that uh, governs that uh, public health uh, emergency was declared yesterday has considerable powers in it, but a, uh, the emergency declared today under the uh, Public Emergency Act um, allows for additional powers, uh, particularly in areas such as supply chains, uh, for example. Any other questions from the room here? Uh, Frank, we'll come back to you. We'll need to take more questions from the room at this time. Any questions from the room? We'll now go over to the phones. Uh, first questions over the phone from Lisa Yudza, followed by Gordon Armstrong and Richard Zussman. Lisa, go ahead. So in Hello? In regarding self-isolation. Yes, go ahead, Lisa. What's your question? Hello? Yes, we can hear you. Can you go ahead, please? Can we move on to Gordon Armstrong now? Gordon, go ahead. Hi. Uh, question about what you're doing about hoarding, people hoarding groceries, toilet paper, and evidently now liquor. Can anything be done to control that situation? Yeah, no, that's, that's an excellent question. And, uh, and I understand people's concerns about wanting to make sure that they, they, they have enough pl uh, supplies at home if they have to, uh, to self-isolate. Um, but the reality is this, our supply chains are in good shape. Um, people need to use common sense. Um, we are working uh, both at the federal and the provincial level with the retail council. Uh, many uh, uh, stores and chains are in fact now putting in place uh, limits uh, in response to, to what has been seen. Um, and, uh, and, and we're encouraged by that. Uh, the declaration that has been put in place uh, uh, today uh, will give additional powers, uh, if necessary, to back up uh, the work that is taking place, uh, not only just with uh, uh, Dr. Bonnie Henry and the provincial health directives uh, that both she and uh, Minister Dix are putting out, but also uh, the work that's being done, uh, as I said, at the provincial and federal levels uh, with, uh, with uh, re the Retail Council, for example, to deal with this issue. Thank you. Next question, Lisa. Can you hear me now? Yes. Please go ahead. I'm going to try doing it this way. Can you guys hear me? Yes, we can hear you, Lisa. Just go ahead with your question. Thank you. I'm wanting to know if the powers that this gives you also include and how it would include enforcing the orders that people self-isolate for people who are not willing to do that. There's a lot of concerns that people are just going to throw caution to the wind. Uh, first off, uh, many of those powers are actually contained uh, under the, uh, the, the, the Public Health Act. Uh, Dr. Bonnie Henry has considerable uh, powers in those particular areas, including being able to direct police uh, to enforce uh, orders. Um, what we want to do is work uh, and make people know there's the right thing to do. Um, and that, uh, you know, coming back with, uh, if you're feeling uh, uh, ill, um, if you're uh, feeling that you've got the symptoms, then the right thing to do is to, uh, to self-isolate. Uh, and that's, uh, that's the approach that is, uh, is being taken. Uh, but, uh, as I said, you know, there are powers available uh, under the, uh, the public uh, health emergency that's been declared uh, to, uh, to ensure that, that if people are flagrantly, uh, uh, you know, uh, abusing or are not following uh, those instructions uh, that they can be uh, be made to. Thank you. Next question, Richard Zussman. Uh, Minister Farnworth, one of the notes here in the legislation around a state of emergency is um, giving you the power uh, to uh, force people who are qualified to provide work to provide work. So do you expect that this will be something you could potentially use uh, to require retired doctors or such or uh, former uh, medical officials to uh, be uh, brought back into the uh, medical workforce? Um, 
As I said at the beginning, the, uh, the introduction of, uh, or the, the declaration of this emergency uh, um, uh, situation uh, uh, does give us broad and sweeping powers to be able to, to direct uh, resources, uh, whether they are human resources or other resources, to deal with uh, this state of emergency that we have uh, in the province. But I can tell you, um, what we're seeing is um, what we see every time that we've had a disaster in this province, people stepping up and coming forward. Uh, that's, what, that's what we do in this province. Um, I do not believe that I'm going to have to use a, a power to force people uh, to do what they instinctively know is the right thing to do. Uh, we are seeing every day, uh, and we're fielding inquiries both within my ministry and in other ministries, and especially uh, in the health ministry, of retired health professionals who uh, know that they have skills that they want to assist uh, and in coming forward to do just that. So I'm not anticipating having to use those powers. They are there, but you know what? British Columbians are doing the right thing already in that regard. Thank you. Next question, Moira Witten. Moira, are you there? Hi, Minister. Thank you for your time. I'm here. Um, I'm asking about uh, the powers that, in conjunction with Dr. Henry's public health emergency declared yesterday, um, you know, what are you, uh, have you had issues with people not self-isolating? Are, are there any reports there? Um, to date, um, what we are what we are seeing is is that people are doing the right thing, but we know that there are always those who who who, who choose not to, um, and uh, you know it's a big province. What we want to ensure is that. Um, as was declared yesterday with the, uh, the, the public uh, uh, health emergency, the, the state of emergency uh, um, will allow additional powers if they're required to back up uh, the powers that, the, uh, that uh, Dr. Bonnie Henry and the, uh, the Ministry of Health have. Uh, in our case, uh, the legislation I'm responsible for, uh, they are additional powers uh, and if necessary, uh, they can be exercised. But, but the key thing right now is to ensure that we're ready that we have the ability to deal with situations that they occur and that, um, you know, um, we are in discussion with uh, uh, Dr. Henry on all, on all these matters. Uh, and uh, right now what we're seeing is, is that, uh, is that uh, the directives uh, that she is uh, putting in place are, are being followed. Next question, Keith Baldry. Uh, hi there, Minister, you hear me? Yeah. Hello? Yeah, we can yeah. hear you. Yeah, so again, back to the powers outlined in the Emergency Program Act, they're pretty specific. One of them, uh, a number of them reference, uh, uh, you'll have the power to potentially ration uh, food, uh, set the price for food and gas. Can you envision yourself actually having to take those steps? Um, I can tell you uh, right now um, that uh, our supply chains are in good shape. Uh, as I've said, um, we have been working with the federal government. I can tell you, I just got off a, a call before this press conference with Minister Blair and uh, my, uh, my uh, colleagues from across the country, and that uh, the supply chains are in good shape. Uh, we've been, as I said, working with the, uh, the retail council and retailers uh, to ensure uh, that we are able to identify and deal with issues. Um, as I said right at the beginning, um, these are extraordinary powers that can be brought to bear in extraordinary situations. Uh, but uh, our, as I said, our supply chains are working. Uh, we're getting good cooperation. I'm pleased with the cooperation that we're seeing. Uh, and that's what I expect to, uh, to continue. Next question is from Les Lane, followed by Rob Shaw. Les, go ahead. Well, Minister, do you have uh, any reports on your desk or any personal sense about the state of law enforcement in BC and the uh, crime rate in general? What's going on there? Is the law enforcement community mobilized or are they kind of curtailed like everybody else is? No, uh, law enforcement is, uh, is, uh, is mobilized in the same way that uh, every other uh, sector is. Uh, they are doing their job uh, uh, enforcing the law uh, on a day-to-day, -day, uh, or just as they always do. Uh, I can tell you that my director of police services has been in uh, regular contact with uh, detachments around the province uh, to, uh, to get an understanding of the impact in terms of uh, if COVID-19 is, uh, is, is, is having an effect, and as well as uh, preparation that are required uh, and, and, and any issues that come up. So, so we are, you know, as I said, having daily, uh, daily communication on that. Uh, and uh, I'm really pleased with the job that they're doing. 
Thank you. Rob, go ahead. Oh, well, hi, Minister. Can you just tell us, uh, you're recalling the, the legislature, I think the past legislation to protect people from being laid off if they're calling sick during this pandemic and I guess in terms of supplies so the government has money. Can you just outline um, what that legislation is and how this uh, brief session is going to go? Yeah, um, so we will be coming back on Monday. Um, it will be based on a, a quorum of about 12 uh, members in the House. Uh, there will be a speaker in the chair. Uh, there will be uh, two members of the, the opposition. Uh, there will be two members in the Green Party, and then the balance will be uh, from, the, uh, from the government. Um, we've worked very cooperatively in terms of being able to deal with uh, two pieces of legislation, uh, one of which will be a supply act. Uh, which will allow government to uh, to function, and the other will be amendments to the Employment Standards Act, um, which will deal with some of the issues that you've talked about. And I know my colleague um, uh, Carol James, the Finance Minister, will be making uh, more details on those uh, uh, later on. Uh, but uh, my expectation is is that they will uh, be dealt with uh, uh, expeditiously, and that uh, there will be debate and discussion on them. Uh, but uh, I'm very pleased with the cooperation that we have had uh, from both. Both the opposition and the Green Party uh, in recognizing the importance of this situation. Uh, I can also tell you in terms of the, uh, the legislative building itself, there will be a, a minimal staff presence uh, that we will be maintaining uh, social, uh, social distance uh, while we're there, uh, even, in the, uh, even in the chamber. Binder, Binder Sajjan, go ahead please. Uh, hi, Minister. I just wanted to know, um, you know, on behalf of the BC government, if you can respond to the package uh, announced by the federal government today. Yeah, what I can tell you is that, uh, as I said, I was on the uh, the phone with uh, Minister Blair and my uh, provincial uh, counterparts from across the country. Um, I am very pleased with uh, with what I've heard today um, on a number of fronts, uh, both clearly uh, uh, in terms of the border. Uh, Ottawa has listened to uh, to BC's concerns, and that uh, um, you know the, uh, the the closing of the border uh, to all but essential um, uh, 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 border crossings and the ability to allow uh, commercial uh, crossings to continue, I think, is extremely important to us here in British Columbia. And that uh, the financial measures that uh, I've heard about, and I'm obviously going to wait uh, further details over the uh, over the coming days, um, are significant and will certainly. Uh, uh, help uh, British Columbians and we'll uh, build on the work that uh, we will be doing here in British Columbia. Thank you. The next question over the phone is from Eva, CBC Vancouver, followed by Amy Smart and Tanya Fletcher. Eva, go ahead, please. Hi, yes. I wanted to ask, uh, in terms of uh, uh, people gathering, how are you going to police or advise people who are going ahead with weddings that traditionally see 500 people at the ceremony um, and, up to, and always with, with overseas guests? Um, the provincial health officer has already made uh, decisions around that uh, and the, the gatherings of uh, 50 people and social distance applies uh, to, uh, to weddings uh, and so people need to be, uh, need to be mindful of that. Uh, we saw yesterday, for example, uh, you know that there were many uh, uh, pubs, restaurants and public occasions that were wanting to celebrate uh, St. Patrick's Day. They, uh, they, 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 had to, uh, they had to cancel. Amy, go ahead. Um, hi, Minister. Um, I've spoken with fire chiefs in various districts who are changing their service models. They're starting to triage their calls and not respond to the most um, ser or the least serious medical calls. RCMP are closing some of their counter service. I'm wondering if you're giving any direction from the provincial level to first responders or if you're leaving it up to each each office to make their own decisions. Uh, first off, uh, there's there's a number of, of, of issues that uh, are, are dealt with. One are the directives that are made by the uh, by Dr. Bonnie Henry and the Ministry of Health in terms of how to approach these situations uh, and and what to do when uh, COVID-19, uh, if, if if exposure or uh, uh, confirmation has been uh, has been detected or people are feeling uh, feeling ill and sick. And then of course they will make local decisions based on the the size of the detachment and uh, the scheduling and uh, the, the situations in their particular location. Next question, Tanya Fletcher. Go ahead, please. Uh, 
Hi, Minister. Um, further to Monday's uh, proposed changes to the Employment Standards Act, um, can you further explain or maybe explicitly um, clarify for people what BC is able to do? Like, for example, with financial aid, Carol James said that largely depends on what the feds are doing with their aid package. But for, for these changes to the Employment Standards Act, what capabilities does BC have to protect workers, and how will that look under those changes? Okay. So what I can tell you is that uh, that the uh, the ministry, uh, the finance ministry, will be able to speak to those uh, later. Uh, what I can tell you right now is that there will be legislation introduced, uh, and the details will be unveiled uh, at that time. Thank you. Next question, McLean. Go ahead, please. Hi, Minister. I realize uh, much of this would be out of your control, but um, how long do you anticipate the uh, the sitting next week will need to go? Well, um, what I can tell you is that uh, I am hopeful that we will be able to to get things done in uh, in a single day. Um, that's uh, that's why I've worked closely with my uh, with my colleagues in both the uh, the uh, the BC Liberals and the Green Party on uh, on a session coming together. And as I said, I've been pl very pleased with the cooperation that we've had. Um, we all recognize that this is about British Columbians. This is not about uh, uh, partisan uh, differences or or, or, or gains of uh, one-upmanship um, we have we have worked very well together and uh, so I expect that uh, we will be dealing thing things in a in a business-like manner that they will be asking the questions um, you know on the legislation we'll be answering the questions uh, and our, our goal is to get it done uh, as quickly as we can thank you next question is from Albert Fairchild TV go ahead please uh, Minister, we see people we selling groceries, whether in the online or at the car trunk. So, um, and also the grocery stores um, uh, will price, uh, mark, mark up the price of some uh, necessity items. So, what law enforcement is available to um, to deal with that? Um, I'll make a couple of points on this. There is no place uh, for price gouging. There is no place uh, for anybody, either individuals or retailers, taking advantage of what is uh, an unprecedented uh, health situation uh, in this province, in this country, and globally. Um, it is important that we recognize that we are all in this together and that by making uh, products uh, unavailable to people through price or by hoarding does not help anybody. In fact, it has the potential to really hurt people. Um, we know uh, in our own neighborhoods that uh, there are people who can't get out, there are seniors who need help, uh, and British Columbians are stepping up to do that. And so uh, we will be watching and uh, uh, very carefully. Uh, the Retail Council has made it clear that they do not expect uh, any of their members uh, to engage in those kinds of uh, activities. One of the things that I can tell you uh, that the powers uh, that uh, uh, become available uh, under today's declaration, uh, for example, prohibit the uh, selling of uh, necessary supplies, medical supplies, uh, reselling them. Uh, so we take this issue very, very seriously. Uh, Bob Mackin, go ahead, please. Hello, your hand. Um, the uh, health system has recalled uh, retired nurses, retired doctors. Might you do the same thing for uh, the uh, emergency services system? We recall recently retired police officers, firefighters, uh, ambulance paramedics, uh, and others, maybe even uh, corrections officers. Are you looking at that as well? Uh, absolutely, and in fact, we're already uh, receiving uh, uh, inquiries uh, from uh, uh, retired first responders and in all those areas that you, the, that you just mentioned who, who understand that they bring a skill set that we need at this time. Uh, and as I said, that's an example of how British Columbians are stepping up. That's an example of, uh, of community coming together. And uh, that's why, you know, um, it's... I am confident uh, that British Columbians will continue to do the right thing. And the last question from the phones from Mary. Mary Griffin, go ahead, please. 
Oh, hi, Minister. Um, last night, uh, Dr. Richard Samwick, he's the Chief Medical Officer for Island Health, said the expectation is that this can go on for four to six months. I'd just like to know how long is the provincial government making preparations for the duration of this? And um, just in terms of, uh, we have a large percentage of renters. When can we expect uh, any protection for renters? Um, on your last question, uh, government is seized of that issue. Uh, and uh, so work is being done in that area. In terms of how long is government prepared for? As long as it takes. Um, we are going to get through this. Um, British Columbians and Canadians are going to get through this. Uh, and we're all working together to make that happen. Uh, this particular state of emergency is for two weeks and then can be renewed uh, by, uh, by cabinet order. And uh, we are going to be there for the, the long haul as long as it takes. Thank you. We'll come back to the room now for one last question. Frank, uh, so go ahead. A, it's a follow up. Uh, how are you going to? Uh say redeploy uh, the emergency services uh, under your control uh, in order to uh, go through this uh, time of state of emergency what uh, will be the like major areas that uh, you will be looking for for those uh, first responders to coping with well first and foremost decisions are made by the ministry of health uh, and dr bonnie henry so they have uh, significant powers uh, um, already uh, the powers we are, are, are coming into force today are additional ones that back up that work that's being done. So what happens is, is assessments are done and if decisions need to be made, then those decisions uh, are made. Uh, as I said, we're seeing people stepping up, wanting to come out of retirement to help. Um, all of those things are already going into the system. Um, Emergency operations are already in place uh, that uh, that will allow that that will allow that to happen. So, um, the plan is proceeding as it's supposed to. That was the last question. Uh, that's a wrap up. Thank you very much, all, for participating. Thank you. We now join the following program in progress.